Okay, so finally, we are going to prove, uh, you know, a, a fa famous and beautiful theorem. And the proof is very nice. You will, you will enjoy it, uh, which is the OLS pentagonal number theorem. Okay, so and we are going to use uh, uh, generative functions to prove this. There are several proofs, but this one is uh, in particular very beautiful. So we start with uh, something that we have already seen, right? The generative function for integer partitions. We proved that it is product i equal to 1 to infinity 1 by 1 minus x raised to i. Now, let us uh, define dp to be the set of integer partitions whose parts are all distinct. So dp is a distinct partition, right? So each part must be distinct. I don't want a partition of integer. So if I if I am looking at the partition of let's say uh, partition of ten, right? I can write it as uh, two, two, or maybe, maybe let me. Four, four, two. But this is not allowed to be in DP, right? Because uh, you know the parts are not distinct. So I don't want such partitions, right? So I want to avoid these kind of things where parts are repeated. On the other hand, this is a partition where the parts are distinct, so therefore uh, this is allowed, right? So uh, we want to we want to look at the set of all uh, set of all uh, integer partitions where the parts are distinct for uh, uh, any uh, any n, right? So therefore uh, uh, look at all possible uh, integers for each of them. Look at the set of partitions and uh, you know, uh, in which, uh, you know, the parts are distinct and collect them together. So that is the set dp, right? Now we want to look at the generative function for uh, dp, okay? So let us see what is this. So first we observe that for each uh, number i, right? Uh, you know, when we, when we are deciding the partition, right? But as we did in the case of 10, for example, right? Each number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. We have a choice, right? Whether we want to add i into the partition mu exactly once or not to add it, right? So for every i, we have a choice either add it once or not at all. Then that's okay, right? But if I add, I can only add it once. Now, uh, you know, as we uh, just noticed, right? This choice is given by the generative function 1 plus x raised to y because if I choose either x raised to y, I say that I have chosen i to be in the partition. And if I choose one, then I say that i is not in the partition, right? So uh, then, if you look at the product one plus x raised to y, right, where i ranging from one to infinity, that tells that you know I am uh, choosing you know uh, you know either exactly one copy of i, right, for any uh, integer I am going to choose only uh, either uh, it uh, exactly once or nothing, right? And therefore, this is the generative function for dp of x. Right? That is that is something uh, very clear to us. Now that that we can get by product formula. But on the other hand, what is dp of x uh, by the definition of dp? Right? Dp says that uh, you know dp is the set of all uh, set of all partitions where each part is distinct. Now, uh, because of this. Uh, how do I get the generative function, right? So because each part is distinct, and uh, uh, you know, I I sum over all all the you know elements in in DP, right? X raised to uh, what number it is representing, right? So if if the partition is representing let's say uh, n, right, the partition of n, then uh, X raised to n uh, is what we want to say, right? So because we want to find the coefficient of X raised to n to count exactly the partitions of n, right, which belongs to dp. And uh, another way to say is that it is summation over all uh, mu in dp. 
uh, x raised to uh, cardinality of mu. So therefore, whenever uh, you know the size of mu, right? So whenever the size of mu is n, uh, you know we will look at the partitions mu which belongs to dp and how many are there? That is precisely the number of such partitions, right? So therefore, this is the definition of dp of x, right? In another uh, way. So we know that summation uh, mu in dp x raised to size of mu is the product i equal to 1 to infinity 1 plus x raised to y. So we got the generative function for dp, right? Now, so we, we uh, started uh, with the generative function for the integer partition which is 1 by 1 minus x raised to y, right? So, uh, let us now, so, so there is some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of uh, similarity between these two things, uh, especially if I, you know, instead of looking at 1 by 1 minus x raised to y, suppose I look at uh, the uh, product of the reciprocals 1 by, uh, you know, uh, 1 minus x raised to y, right. So if I look at 1 minus x raised to y, the product, right, it is just the reciprocals in the uh, generative function of the partitions of integer i, right. Uh, uh, partitions of an inti uh, integers, uh, then it is very closely related to product uh, i equal to 1 to infinity 1 plus x raised to y because I am just replacing x with minus x, right. So because of this uh, similarity, uh, I am doing this and, and, and the fact that the Euler's pentagonal theorem is about the expansion of this product, okay. So uh, and what will be the terms in the expansion, that is what the uh, theorem is about. So let us now uh, look at this uh, product, which is very much related to uh, the uh, both, right? In 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 two different ways. Uh, this is uh, this product is related to the distinct parts uh, generative function by uh, changing x to minus x, and uh, also related to the uh, partition for integers uh, as reciprocals of the uh, factors, right? So therefore. Uh, these are this is related to both, and we are going to use this relation. Now, suppose we are given a partition of uh, uh, some number, uh, say uh, mu is equal to uh, mu one, mu two, etc., mu s. So there are exactly s parts. So the length of mu is s, right? So if you recall, when we studied partitions, right, integer partition, we said that length of the partition denoted L of mu is the number of uh, terms, right? Number of parts. So given a partition mu, uh, mu1 to mu s, yes, uh, the length of mu is precisely s. Yes. Now let us like again look at uh, some uh, you know, product i equal to 1 to infinity 1 plus x raised to y, right? Which by definition is summation mu in dp x raised to size of mu. Now, when I change the sign uh, of uh, x to minus x, right, so then what happens? So I get uh, not x to minus x, uh, I'm changing the, uh, you know, it's not changing x to minus x, sorry, uh, it's uh, changing uh, the sign uh, from uh, 1 plus x raised to y to 1 minus x raised to y, right. So I have product i equal to 1 to infinity, 1 minus x raised to y. So how can I represent this in terms of the summation? Uh, that we have. Okay. So I claim that this is actually equal to summation mu in dp minus 1 raised to length of mu x raised to uh, size of mu. Now, can you think uh, why this is precisely the case, right? So if you look at, uh, you know, x raised to uh, size of mu, right, we are looking at the coefficient of, so let us say mu is the partition of n. Then uh, if you are looking at uh, x raised to n, how do I get uh, the term x raised to n, right? So x raised to n comes from the partition mu, right? Uh, and the partition mu is, let us say, mu1 to mu s. Now, how did uh, this x raised to uh, uh, size of mu, right, x raised to n came about? Well, it came about because, uh, you know, in the product on the left side, right, we have, uh, right, we have 1 minus uh, x raised to y, 
and what is 1 minus x raised to y saying that I am choosing minus x raised to y if whenever I am choosing i, right? So when I choose mu 1, right, I am basically choosing minus of x raised to uh, size of mu 1, right? Right. Similarly, for every i, I am choosing minus x raised to size of mu i. So, minus, uh, you know, this is, there is no bracket here, so therefore it is negative, right, or minus of x raised to uh, size of mu i. And then when the mu i is add up to, uh, you know, n, right, uh, the size of mu i is add up to n, then we get uh, uh, mu itself, right. So, therefore, uh, Therefore, when I obtain x raised to uh, uh, right size of mu, I have taken how many uh, copies of minus x raised to y, where i is ranging from you know like uh, some numbers. Precisely length of mu many copies of minus x raised to i I have taken right minus x raised to i minus x raised to j minus x raised to k etc. Right, and if there are odd number of negative terms, then it is that a product is odd and otherwise it is uh, uh, even. So therefore, if I look at minus 1 whole ratio length of mu, it accounts for the sign, right? By uh, length of mu is odd, then I get negative, and length of mu is even, I will get positive. Time. So that explains why this summation uh, i equal to 1 to infinity, 1 minus x raised to y, is uh, summation over all the distinct parts, right? Mu belongs to TP, uh, distinct partitions, uh, minus 1 raised to length of mu, x raised to size of mu. Now we are going to use some trick, right? So we, we have learned about involutions earlier. So given uh, a partition mu, let's say mu1, mu2, etc., mu s. Of course, the, we will assume that mu1 is greater than mu2, etc., uh, greater than mu s, because the, you know, in, in a partition, we, we order them according to the size, and since the parts are distinct, we know that uh, it is never uh, an equality, right? So, mu1 is strictly greater than mu2, greater than, etc., greater than mu s. So, mu is in, uh, in the distinct parts. Uh, let us say that, you know, the, the largest index of, uh, you know, uh, index, let's say A, for which mu1 to mu A are consecutive numbers, right? So, let us say that mu1 and mu2 are such that mu2 is exactly mu1 minus 1, mu3 is exactly uh, mu2 minus 1, uh, etc. up to, let us say, A, right? So, if you, if you, uh, you know, so we are looking at this specific type of partitions. Uh, not specific type of partition, we are looking at the partition then deciding up to which number we can have uh, this consecutive uh, uh, numbers, right? So, let us see. Yeah, so here is an example. It, uh, a partition, uh, the Farage diagram. If you look at this, you will see that uh, here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? Uh, the first line, the, you know, there is 8. So, it is a partition with uh, the first time is 8, right, mu1 is 8. Then uh, we have 7, which is mu2. Then we have 6, which is mu3. But then mu4 is uh, 4, which is, right, you know, it is not uh, consecutive. So, 8, 7, 6 is consecutive, but the next one is not. Uh, you know. So, therefore, uh, you know, my a is now 3, right? So, this is how I, I choose A, right? So, A is the largest index for which mu1, mu2, etc., mu A are consecutive numbers. Then, we define B to be, uh, you know, B is equal to mu S, which is the smallest part of mu, right? The last part is B. So, in this case, what is last part? Last part is 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So, last part is B. So, Given any uh, you know partition uh, in uh, DP, we know that 
you know me one greater than me two etc me yes and uh, we can always so we have a uh, you know non zero index because me one is always there so a is at least one so it will be between one and s right and therefore uh, uh, it is well defined and we have uh, we have a and we have b b is the last part so therefore a and b are well defined now we are going to define an involution right which takes partitions to uh, you know partitions right so i am going to transform the partitions by defining an involution so if a is less than b right uh, you know so we have defined a and b if a is strictly less than b then i define the involution i of mu1 mu2 etc mu s right uh, as going to so uh, so uh, i of mu1 mu2 etc mu s is the partition by uh, you know subtracting one from each of the first a terms right because there is a consecutive numbers are there mu1 mu2 mu3 etc and uh, uh, therefore uh, i can subtract one from each of them right so uh, from mu1 i subtract one mu2 i subtract one mu3 i subtract one and then mu uh, a i subtract one right so i have subtracted uh, you know a one so therefore totally i have subtracted a now since a is strictly less than b i can add a uh, as one part at the end and then uh, the total will still be the same right so i am going to do that i take uh, mu1 to mu s from the first uh, a parts i subtract subtract one right then all the remaining parts i keep as it is mu a plus 1 to mu s and then uh, i include a new part right the number of parts is now increasing right and uh, i am adding mu s plus 1 is equal to a right so because a is strictly less than b uh, we know that uh, you know this is uh, this is definitely uh, a, a partition of uh, partition of uh, mu right again so uh, so therefore uh, you know the, the uh, so the uh, the involution does not affect the affect the total right we, it so it it keeps the size of the partition or area of the uh, shape of the figure right the area is fixed because i am just rearranging the uh, cells and uh, uh, and 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 because uh, mu uh, a plus 1 right so this is basically strict uh, we know that when i subtract these numbers will never be uh, larger than uh, mu a plus 1 to mu a so therefore uh, this will be uh, still uh, non uh, increasing sequence so therefore uh, i have defined a uh, partition by doing this so i of uh, a is a uh, and i of mu is uh, another partition so i of mu is obtained by decreasing the first uh, uh, eight uh, parts by mu and by adding the part uh, uh, with size a uh, to uh, the last part of mu right so here is uh, the pictorial representation of the same i start with this the partition right where uh, i have uh, uh, these numbers uh, and a and b are here a is less than b because a is 3 and b is 4 so therefore i put this a right the three elements i am i am moving them from there i know i have reduced the numbers from here and then putting at the last part right which is b right uh, below the uh, below the uh, b that we have and now for this again now we can look at what is a and b right so if you look at the a and b you will see that b is now 3 a is 1 2 3 uh, 4 and 5 right so therefore now uh, a is uh, uh, a is larger than b right so we will define uh, you know uh, you know the involution for that also and one can be defined in such a way that uh, its uh, involution uh, will be the original image itself. And similarly, here is another example. We have uh, uh, A and B, where uh, you know, uh, you know, this A is reaching here. I again put it here. I get another uh, map. So uh, I, I have, 
and have the involution of the first figure. Right? So the what is the uh, uh, the other case that if uh, uh, if a is greater than or equal to b, if a is greater than or equal to b, then I uh, I takes mu to mu uh, you know uh, one plus one mu two plus one etc. Uh, mu b plus one right uh, and uh, and uh, you know mu uh, subscript b plus one to mu a and uh, uh, mu uh, s uh, uh, minus one okay so what i do is basically removing the last part right the mu s is the last part i remove uh, mu s uh, from that and distribute mu s is actually equal to b right so the smallest part is b and distribute this b to the first b times of uh, mu right so i am going to add one to each of the first b parts since uh, you know a is greater than or equal to b uh, you know uh, i have the leverage to do this so i i add uh, uh you know uh, add uh, these parts and uh, and i get uh, the involution right so i i of mu is obtained by removing the last part of mu and increasing the first b parts uh, by one now the claim is that uh, i is an involution because if i look at i of i of mu it is equal to mu and this is something we can uh, verify right now it, it preserves the area because we we don't uh, you know re, you know remove any of the cells. We are just moving around the cell, so the total is going to be the same. But on the other hand, it is sign reversing in DP. Why is it sign reversing? Because if you are going to get uh, distinct parts in the uh, new mu, right? If uh, if the new uh, partition at I of mu is uh, having distinct parts, then the number of parts has changed by one, right? So the length of mu is changing now, right? So length of mu and length of i of mu uh, differs exactly by one. So in this summation, the uh, coefficient right minus one uh, l raised mu right that uh, sign has changed right for this particular partition. So it basically is a map from uh, partitions to partitions where you know for the first uh, partition and second partition if both of them are uh, you know uh, in in DP then uh, the sign of them are uh, opposite uh, they are distinct partitions they are different partitions and uh, the signs are different so if i can match up this they the, those terms will cancel out in the summation right so if, if i am looking at the uh, summation here the corresponding terms will cancel out which means that in this product right the product is basically the you know the expansion of this product is precisely uh, you know the way we are obtained here so we need to figure out which times are going to cancel out right uh, in this product and that is what uh, our aim is so we have defined this involution and see whether uh, there is any problem with this simulation or, or uh, if uh, any of the times uh, are uh, remaining right so there will be some cancellation because whenever mu uh, is going to i of mu and uh, mu and i of mu are uh, distinct partitions we know that those two will cancel out, right? Because they have distinct different signs. The involution is a sign reversing involution. So we now observe that uh, we now observe that uh, not all uh, uh, involutions of mu are uh, uh, going to be uh, in in DP. Okay, so only those in DP. We will be counted by the summation. Therefore, only those uh, pairs will uh, cancel out. So we need to figure out which are the ones which are not uh, counted in DP. So there are two cases. Okay, one is that uh, one is that like if B is equal to a plus one, right? So if exactly uh, a plus one, in that case, what happens? So B uh, is here five and A is four, right? And if B is actually equal to a plus one, when I remove these four parts right the last four uh, cells right uh, and we are going to put it below uh, below b what happens uh, 
you know, I am going to put four cells below uh, B, but now B has decreased by one, right? So, and therefore we have four new parts coming here, where these uh, parts have disappeared, right? So we are getting a partition, but but the last two parts are the same, right? Because this there is four here, B become B minus one, and uh, A is also uh, 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 equal to uh, B minus one, right? So therefore. Uh, uh, these two parts are having exactly the same uh, size. So, so two uh, same numbers are uh, appearing and therefore it is not in DP. I mean, it's not DD, it's DP. Right? So I of mu is not in DP for this case. So we have I of mu. But then I of mu is not uh, in, uh, in in DP. Therefore, it you know this this term will not be cancelled. So we can say this is a fixed point. Okay. Now there is another uh, case. Uh, ben also we have this issue that uh, that is when b is equal, equal to a. So if b is equal to a, then we cannot define i of mu because uh, you know when I when I take away uh, you know the a, a a a parts right, then a becomes larger than uh, you know b minus uh, one right. B uh, you know we had uh, how many times the last uh, part is also removed. So therefore if b is equal to a then uh, what happens is that when you remove the uh, last part, it becomes b minus one. I cannot put a below it, so therefore I cannot really define i of mu. So i of mu is undefined, so therefore I can say i of mu is mu itself. So this is again a fixed point. So whenever i of mu does not belong to DP, we will say i of mu is equal to mu itself. So now our involution is now defined uh, well. Uh, that uh, whenever we can define i of mu to be in DP. I define I of mu in the previous uh, as in the previous example, and these two cases I will define I of mu to be mu itself. So therefore I have the involution, and we know that uh, I of I of mu is precisely uh, mu itself. Uh, and once we have this, uh, so here is the uh, you know written explanation that uh, if a is equal to length of mu and b is a plus one, then as we observed, I of mu is in not in DP. And uh, in that case, we have to uh, set i of mu to be mu itself. And similarly, if uh, uh, I cannot define this because uh, the length uh, of the part that I am going to add is more than the last part in uh, in uh, mu minus uh, you know one one one, right? We have uh, to define uh, i of mu to be mu itself. So therefore, these two terms are fixed points, and uh, all other terms are. Uh, you know, uh, not fixed, and therefore they will cancel out. So when exactly uh, this happens, right? So when exactly are the fixed points there, and fixed points are the only ones going to survive in the uh, product. So therefore, uh, and in the sum, right? So let us uh, analyze this. So we can see that whenever uh, mu is uh, of the following form. Uh, this will happen because we want uh, the numbers to be consecutive, right? So if mu is 2k, 2k minus 1, etc., 2k plus 1, right? And it has exactly length k, right? So the length is k, there are exactly k times here. And then, uh, of course, the, what is the area of this? I, can, I have to just add these two elements, which is k into 3k plus 1 uh, by 2, right? Or uh, if mu is the case 2k minus 1, 2k minus 2, etc., up to k, right, where uh, again length k, right, instead of starting from 2k, I start with 2k minus 1. And again, uh, the size of k is uh, k into 3k minus 1 by uh, 2. In these two cases, we can verify that case A and, uh, you know, k, these two uh, previous cases, right, uh, this case and uh, uh, these cases uh, will appear. Precisely in this case. So this is something one can one can manually uh, verify, right? Because we are partitioning a number with this property, right? The the sizes are uh, uh, you know, now well defined because here everything must be uh, decreasing. Here also everything must be decreasing uh, one by one exactly consecutive. And these two cases will happen precisely when 
the numbers are either uh, of this form and uh, area is precisely the sum of the numbers so therefore that is also clear so these are the fixed points uh, one can verify and then the empty partition of course uh, is also a fixed point right it's not cancelled uh, and uh, therefore uh, we can use this information to define uh, the product uh, from the uh, summation uh, formula right so what are the terms that is going to survive are precisely when uh, the power of x is uh, either uh, you know the size is uh, n into 3n minus 1 by 2 or uh, n into 3n plus 1 uh, by 2 and uh, in this case the sign will be minus 1 raised to uh, n which is the number of times so n is the number of times and the uh, the area is n into 3n minus 1 by 2 or n into 3n plus 1 by 2 right? so summation n equal to 1 to infinity this and plus the one for the empty partition and that are the times which are going to survey and what is this if you expand this you will get 1 minus x minus x square plus x raised to 5 plus uh, x raised to 7 minus x raised to 12 etc so these numbers uh, which are appearing in the uh, you know exponents are called the pentagonal numbers and this result is known as the Euler's pentagonal number theorem pentagonal number theorem and this is a very uh, nice and uh, well known result uh, something uh, you know uh, comes uh, a lot in, in uh, mathematics and very very beautiful result and we have a very uh, elegant uh, proof of that and I think with this application we can conclude our uh, visit to uh, generative functions uh, and uh, there are more techniques that one can learn but uh, we will uh, keep that for an advanced course and here I will leave you with some few exercise questions which you can try out so the questions include uh, the first one is let hn be the number of uh, compositions of n into parts where each part is either one or two okay if h0 is one and uh, h of uh, x is summation hn x ratio n is the generative function find out uh, hn right find a formula for hn second question calls uh, to uh, look at the right derangements right so we, we know that we have solved the derangements using the inclusion exclusion right the formula for derangements uh, and we have shown that the formula is dn is equal to summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1 raised to i uh, n factorial by uh, i factorial okay so this is something that we have uh, proved now find the exponential generative function uh, for the uh, derangements right let's say dark of x and uh, try to find it in a closed form uh, then uh, find the uh, you know exponential generative function for the bell numbers that we have discussed in, uh, in when we are looking at the partitions and finally uh, here is another interesting very interesting question uh, suppose uh, you know you are all familiar with the the dice right the six phase dice with the numbers uh, you know uh, the dots one two up to let's say uh, uh, six right so there are the six uh, phases each phase has distinct number of dots one to six now let us say that uh, these phases are uh, uh, you know this uh, uh, this uh, this dice uh, is picked up and uh, and rolled right so there are two of them so i roll them now the outcome of a roll is basically the sum of the numbers on the top okay so take the uh, numbers uh, on the top or number of dots on the top uh, count them now because it is 1 to 6 uh, the count right some of these two will be ranging from 2 to 12 right it can 1 1 is happening it is 2 uh, 3 and 4 or uh, uh, you know uh, 5 and 2 are happening or 6 and 1 are happening you will get 7 etc right uh, up to 12 uh, is possible and uh, these are the only outcomes that we can have from this uh, rolling right now then we what we want to do is to use generating functions right so find the generating function for counting the number of ways the sum uh, 2 to 12 can occur right so whenever uh, 12 is happening the coefficient of x raised to 12 must be the number of ways that can appear now use this generating function 
and try to you know uh, uh, play with it right and show that there is another uh, unique pair of dice that we can uh, come up with so the two dice but the numbers uh, are going to be different not one to six it will have some other numbers so can you define uh, uh, now can you show that there is another set of uh, two dice six uh, face dice where the numbers of the sides are slightly different from uh, you know one to six but with the same uh, uh, outcomes with the same probability that the number of ways each uh, uh, outcome the, the, the number 12 or 5 or 3 or 2 comes is uh, the same right uh, so uh, this uh, type of dice have a special name we will not uh, you know that is something uh, we can uh, find out later okay. so uh, try to solve this this is a nice question it might take a little bit of work but it will be uh, worth uh, the exercise so with that uh, we conclude uh, uh, this uh, the you know introduction to uh, generative functions and uh, we will uh, uh, see more about it in in, in in advanced courses okay so with that uh, i wind up and uh, we will uh, continue with uh, uh, a different topic in the uh, next uh, lecture